Hey everybody, my name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami, and welcome to the Camper Report Show. Bob, on today's Camper Report Show, I'm going to be talking with the president, Tristan Farrell of Sunlight Resorts. They've got four mega resorts under construction right now in Florida. How about you? You know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you who I'm interviewing today, John, but I'm going to tell you the topic. You know, every RVer has a bucket list. They always have something that they absolutely want to see in their RV. But many of them, it's the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, an absolutely amazing event. But you'll have to stay tuned to find out more about it. OK, we're going to go up, up and away with all the news, plus those great features right here. Where, Bob? On the Camper Report Show. Sleeping on the short RV Queen Topper is as comfortable as sleeping at home. Now that we have the topper on there, it's made all the difference. It's really comfortable. And the comfort comes from the fact that it's not too firm, nor is it too soft. It's kind of the right level of comfort for being out, especially when you're away from home. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Camp Report Show. This is the news segment where Bob Zagami and I talk about all the latest news about the RV and camping industries. And Bob, Let's talk about camping one second now, because just this past week, the border, and I'm only saying border, not borders, between Canada and the United States opened for northbound traffic, which means Americans are going to be allowed into Canada for the first time in at least a year and a half. You know, and, and they were lined up at the gate August 9th. As, as soon, they, they had plenty of advance notice, and the tourists and the RVers were lined up at the gate at the border crossing. And it went flawlessly. I understand it was very smooth on, on our end. Now we just have to hope that the Canadian government will reverse the action and let the Canadians come back down into the United States. Mm, I don't know if it's the Canadian government. I think it's the U.S. government that's not allowing the Canadians to enter the United States. And you know what? That has major financial implications, implications because right here in the Northeast where we reside, um, so many people from Quebec come to right where you are and in Old Orchard Beach. Yep. You don't see them this year. And I know the campgrounds are experiencing a little bit of difficulty along with the restaurants and the food stores and the gasoline stations. Well, you're right. It is the United States that it hasn't changed their uh, policy. And, and we noticed a dramatic uh, drop off of the Canadian visitors here in, in Maine this year, uh, the campgrounds, especially also the restaurants, you know, probably half the restaurants that we have up here have menus in uh, French and uh, in English. That other, you know, that it, other language, English. English. That other <laughs> language, right? Yeah, we have so many people that come up here. So it, it's hurt them for the, for the second year in a row. There were none last year, but maybe they can yeah. get a few at the end of the season if we free it up a little bit here. And depending upon what happens in the next few months about U.S. opening the borders, um, Florida and the South and Texas and Arizona, major, major winter RV locations for Canadians are going to be impacted again. So it's not just a certain area. It's got a big impact on the United States. Well, you're right. And, and it has an impact on that snowbird. We like to call them snowbirds that head, head south in the winter. Uh, so the campgrounds can't take reservations. The RVers can't make reservations. The local economy where these snowbirds go thrive in the winter and they run the risk of more and additional financial losses this year. So it's, it's not a small issue for RVers, that's for sure. Not at all. And speaking of our viewers, and we should say that all of the content that we get, like these two stories, come from Woodall's Campground Magazine with our, our good friend Ben Quiggle. And we get so much other content from RV Business, our partners. And one of the other stories that I just picked out from Ben talking about camping is Yabba Dabba Doo, meaning Yellowstone or Jellystone <laughs> and Yogi Bear. That's a combination of the two. There is a new HBO Max series out now called Jellystone. And our friends at Leisure Systems, I know that you've talked to uh, their marketing director not too long ago, right here on this show. They're expecting a boon because of the added exposure they're going to get. And they're stocking up on all their stuffed animals in their gift shops. 
Yeah, they are closely aligned with the Yogi Bear Jellystone uh, franchise. That's their branding. Uh, the Yogi Bear Campgrounds, Jellystone Park Campgrounds, uh, they will be the recipient of a tremendous amount of exposure and publicity that really is going to benefit them in 2022. Because when you think of it, 2021 is quickly disappearing for the yep. camping season. But as that series comes out yep. and they can play on that during the winter, then it's incumbent upon people. And I would say every time you see one of those Jellystone movies or anything about it, you better get on the phone and, and make your reservation. If, if you want to camp at a Jellystone Park next year and you don't have a reservation by the end of this year, you're probably not going to do it because every kid in the world, it's it's just like a Disney thing. It's it's so popular and they have so many amenities for kids. And as we have so many newbies that are coming into the industry, these people don't know what a Jellystone Park is. They don't know what a campground is. So they're going to be the first ones to jump on this thing. So experienced RVers, you know, be warned, be forewarned. If, yep, if exactly. you don't get the reservations early, you don't get the reservations. At all. So Yogi, Boo Boo, and Cindy are making a big comeback in the camping. There you go. And get your t-shirt, get your t-shirt, John. Yeah, Although exactly. they probably don't make those shirts in our size. In our size, yeah, the double XL. <laughs> so speaking of camping and um, a little bit different than campgrounds, but a great supplement to campgrounds is our friends at Harvest Host. And uh, Joel Holland, who's the owner of that organization, has also acquired Boondockers Welcome. And they're having a huge sweepstakes. And all you have to do is go to the Harvest Toast websites. And you know what? They're giving away three winners, um, a, a lifetime membership to Harvest Toast, a one-year membership to Boondockers Welcome, Campground Views lifetime membership, a $1,000 outdoorsy credit, free one year of Togo. I mean, a whole bunch of stuff. And all you have to do is go to HarvestHost.com. HarvestHost.com. Yeah, you just had it's, a recent uh, conversation with Joel. It's another step in Joel's building of that particular brand. He comes up with these ideas, and uh, it won't be the last thing that he does with respect to a giveaway. But uh, here again, <clears throat> summer giveaway. A lot of people have uh, increased their attendance at Harvest Host locations. I know you've already been out to several this year, and uh, it, most people know that name now. Uh, he is, he's built a very good and a very strong brand. And so it's uh, something that you, you haven't checked it out yet. Well, go check out harvesthost.com and, and enter the summer giveaway. And uh, while you're, while you're uh, trying out sweepstakes, it's a little bit different uh, because I, I don't believe there's any purchase necessary for the, for the Joel Holland slash Harvest Host giveaway. But there's another um, opportunity to win something where it's a charity. And talk about that with, with our friends at uh, Rolling on TV. Yeah, Rolling on TV also has a raffle, and it's it's a great raffle because the proceeds from the raffle go to care camps, and they benefit children with cancer and their families. They take them off to a camp. They have doctors. They have psychologists. Uh, they bring the families together, and these kids, many of whom are terminally ill with cancer, have a chance to live in the outdoors and play in the outdoors just like everybody else. So it's a tremendous charity to do that, and you can go to Rolling on TV and you have a chance to win a very nicely customized Nobo travel trailer from Forest River. Uh, dedicated graphics, custom graphics on it. Awesome. It'll, be, it'll be the only travel trailer in the world with those graphics on it. And you'll be the talk of the campground. When you pull in with that thing later this uh, next summer, probably, uh, you will you'll get a lot of attention. And uh, we want to get a lot of attention to that before that. So sign up for their raffle and take a shot at winning the Nobo trailer. There you go. And one of the other trailers that is very iconic when you pull into any RV park, no matter where you go, or you see them on the highways and byways of America, are Airstream trailers. And although they may all look alike from the outside, there's a very special brand new addition that is uh, coming soon to an Airstream dealer near you. Talk about that, please. Yeah, th this was incredible. It was launched this week, but Airstream, in collaboration with Pottery Barn, has introduced a 28-foot travel trailer built on their uh, international chassis, and that's going to be coming out to the dealers real soon. But they've taken this. 
this wasn't uh, something they just thought up overnight. They've actually been working with the Pottery Barn designers and engineers and the Airstream designers and engineers for two and a half years to bring out the residential expertise of Pottery Barn that people are very familiar with. And they gave, they gave them an Airstream shell and those engineers sat down and in two and a half years have come up with one of the most incredible, luxurious, it is, it is not for everybody, it's probably going to list in the 165, 175,000 range, uh, but it is all pottery barn, special custom features, custom nameplates, furniture, uh, accessories. And, and of course, they're known for having creative designs in small spaces. And what's an RV? It's a small space. Yep. But wait, wait until you see what they have done. And we'll, we'll put the links down there. But wait until you see what Airstream and Pottery Barn have just created for the RVs. And we should say that is your classic Airstream travel trailer. It's not motorized, right? Nope. Right. Classic travel trailer. Right. There you go. Yep. All the news of the week in a cute little bundle. Cute. Where is that word? <laughs> we delivered news oh, it's a, right now. Yeah. Well, it's a cute little RV and Yogi cute Bear's cute and Boo Boo's cute. So it, it kind of ties in with this week. Yeah. Yep. And we want to thank our partners, Woodall's Campground Magazine and our RV Business for bringing right. you the news of the week. So it's the Camper Report Show. Bob, tell everybody to hang with us because we'll be back. Hang with us, and you got two great segments coming up on the Camper Report Show. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool. It has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. Welcome back to the Camper Report Show, everybody. And my guest today is well-known RV industry consultant, Sandy Ellingson. Sandy, great to have you back on the show. And uh, we got a special treat for the people, but how you been? I've been wonderful, and it's always a joy and a pleasure to be with you, Bob. All right. So you're doing some work with RV Life, our parent company, on yes. this phenomenal Albuquerque balloon fiesta. You know, I think this is something that's probably on every RV's bucket list. Everybody knows yeah. about it, but most people haven't been there. So tell us about your involvement. Tell us about the, the fiesta first, why it's so exciting. So, um, well, the Balloon Fiesta is so exciting just because it's the only place in the world that you can go. It is the International Fiesta. There are balloons from all over the world, and there are 550 balloons in one place that take off and launch every morning. And when my husband and I first started RVing, it was at the top of our bucket list, and it took us seven months to get there. And it still is at the top of our list. We love going. It became that you became a part of the family when you go and you attend the RV, uh, the Fiesta, especially if you volunteer in some way. And so in working with Andy, what was so neat was he kind of challenged me and said, where can we go where RVers already are so that we can meet with them and support them and just talk to them and not ask them to come to us. And of course, the first place that I thought of was the Balloon Fiesta, because it really is our beer's paradise. So, well, you know, when you when you talk about Andy, of course, we're talking about Andy Rabinowitz, the CEO of, of the RV Life Network. Um, ex explain the uh, exhilaration of the Fiesta for, from a you know, obviously our audience is is RV consumers. What, what is it like to attend it? It's just amazing because when you arrive, there are just, there's all these open lots, lots after lot, as far as you can see of all these RVs. Um, I believe that it'll be, there's over 10,000 RVs just on the Balloon Fiesta fields that are staying, not including those staying in campgrounds and boondocking in the area. And so as far as you can see, there's all these RVers and, everybody has something in common because you're all RVers. So, and then you're learning or at different levels with the Fiesta. And so everybody's got their story. So if they're a newbie, you're going, oh, here's what you can do. Make sure you see this, make sure you see that. Um, now I'm not a morning person, but we, because we love to crew, we're up at 4 a.m. 
We are getting ready. We're down on the Fiesta field by five o'clock. And then we watch and wait, you know, for to find out if we're going to be able to lift off that day because, of, you know, it's all dependent on weather. But the whole time you are down on the field with all these other RVers because you can talk to the people at the Fiesta and they will tell you they could not put this on without RVers. Our community shows up in mass early on as volunteers and helps to set up all of the parking lots, all of the things that go on. And so we really are a very deeply entrenched and part of the family of the Fiesta. And so that's what's so neat is it's not just a place you go and you leave. It's a, when the first time it's a community you meet, you join, and then you're sucked in for life. So you may not get to go every year, but you want to go every year. I can't picture 550 you know, in the town that we just moved from. They had a small balloon festival every mm -hmm. year. And when I say small, they had eight or 10 balloons. I can't picture <laughs> 550 or yeah. more. And and I understand that, that 100 or 150 so, uh, are special characters. They're not just a hot air balloon. Right. Those works of art. They are. They're they're giant. And so you've got Wells Fargo has a balloon there and one of the dairies has a big cow. And then there's all kinds of Star Wars balloons and just different companies who do these balloons in different shapes representing their company. And they many of them will take off in the mornings and they will fly. But then a lot of them are designed specifically for the glows at night. And that's what's so fun is. You watch the launch in the morning, you chase the balloons and you watch them land. And then you're completely open in the middle of the day. By 9.30ish, you're finished in the morning. Everybody goes and has breakfast. We gather in the parking lot so we have fun or we do some sightseeing. And then you gather back in the evenings to go over for the glow. And they put on amazing fireworks at the end of the glow. Um, but all these balloons are right down on the ground where you can walk right up to them. So, I mean, you, it's not like being in the bleachers and watching, you know, with binoculars to see you're experiencing it. Well, and I so can, that is an amazing thing right there. You know, like I say, I've got very limited experience in hot air balloons, but I actually did have one land in my backyard from our small festival one time. And they come out with a bottle of champagne. Is, does every one of these 550 balloons carry a bottle of champagne with them just in case they show up in somebody's backyard? You know, I don't know that the balloonists carry the champagne, but the people, the community all come together. I'm not kidding. The year we were there, balloons don't come down fast, right? So you see them coming down. We were with some people who had been on the interstate, saw a balloon landing. The entire interstate stopped waited for the balloon to land, help them get, you know, the balloon down and get off the real, the interstate and then just picked up and kept going. There were people that they plan breakfast in the hopes that the balloon will land in their backyard. And when they do, they come out and they've got this champagne breakfast for everybody. And so we were in one of the balloons that did that one time. We landed, we thought we were gonna land in the pool. We actually landed just to the left of the pool. But these, I mean, probably 50 people came running out from inside once we were coming close to the ground and they had, you know, biscuits and scrambled eggs and bacon and champagne and mimosas. And it was the whole community just gets involved. And so it's and wonderful. It's a hell of a deal. Hell of a deal. Okay. So you've gone many times as right. an RVer. But yes. this year you have a different role with RV Life. So what, what exactly is RV Life doing in conjunction with the Fiesta and what is your role in that? that so what was, what, what was really interesting was this year, for the first time, I realized um, through talking with some of the people at the Fiesta that there had never been any um, any connection between the RV community and the Fiesta other than one RV dealership that would donate some rigs for VIPs to stay in. And I couldn't understand why that was happening because it's that it's the Mecca for us. And so I started talking with the balloon Fiesta team and said, how can we do this? And so um, what we decided was RV life um, in partnership with Lippert decided that we were going to sponsor all of the RV lots. So we are sponsoring all those lots where all the RVs will come. 
We're going to have all kinds of amazing activities and things that are going to go, go on during the day when the people aren't involved in the balloon fiesta events. Um, we're going to, there's going to be some amazing giveaways. Um, but mostly the industry just wants to come together in a place where our RVers already are and love on them and say, look, we've all come through some really rough couple of years with COVID and in shortages and campground closings and campground openings. And, and so we just want a chance to say thanks for being a part of our community um, and just connect and meet people. We actually have our own VIP tent on Monday and Friday on the Fiesta Field. And if you are an RVer, you are a VIP. We want you to come by and say hello to us. Um, we have heaters if it's cold that morning, so you can watch the uh, balloons lift off from inside the tent with our nice heaters on our patio. And we're just going to do a lot of things to really meet and welcome a lot of the newer RVers, as well as thank a lot of these seasoned RVers who've really been picking up a lot of the slack for us. That's fantastic. So people who are watching this who may not be aware of the Fiesta, where do they learn about it? And how, how does an RV get to sign up and, and make sure they got a, a seat at the table out there? So um, balloonfiesta.com is the website and all of the RV sites now are sold out. So you can't go and stay on Fiesta Field, but you can still go and get a ticket, um, you know, to get in if you can find other accommodations around the Fiesta. Um, I know that the Frog Group is planning, um, they've already pre-purchased quite a few tickets. And if you are a frog owner, which is the Forest River owner group, you right. can connect with them. And they have a whole group that are, are caravanning together that you can still go with. Um, right now, we know there's 27 unique RV groups that are going to be there. And so if you are a part of any of those groups, check with them because a lot of them do have sites that they bought in bulk and you could go potentially through one of your owner groups. Um, is but, it the type, but is it the type of thing that outside that particular fairgrounds or, or where they have it, can they go down the street and get a regular campsite? And, and these things are going to be up in the air anyways. Maybe they drive by yes. on the highway. Yes, there are. Um, there are still quite a few Airbnb locations available. I just looked. And there are some campgrounds that have some availability within about a 20-mile range. Um, again, you don't have to come in for the whole 10 days. You can right. come in, and, and I do believe there may be a couple of spots in the middle of the week um, to come, and so you can check with the Balloon Fiesta on the middle of the week, one or two nights, but there are no full October 2nd to the 10th tickets left. All those are gone. So they, they go up uh, all 10, so do they go up all 10 days in the morning and uh, in the evening? They do the morning and routine. So and they do that because of heating the air, right? Yes. They, they each, each day there's a different agenda, and you can see that on the website. So there are liftoffs every morning, weather permitting. And then there are there are glows, I think, almost every night. Maybe one night there's not a glow. And then the fireworks are on the main nights. They're like the Thursday, Friday, Saturday night fireworks. That's incredible. Our guest today has been Sandy Ellingson, RV industry consultant, working with Lippert and RV Life in making sure that the folks have a, a get together of RVs. So how many people do you think you, by the time you get done with the RVs and the balloon people, the, the, the companies that are putting up balloons and suppliers, how many people show up for this gala 10, 10 day event? Well, since they didn't have it in 2020, we don't have numbers from 2020. But in 2019, I believe there are 1.1 million unique people that walk through the gates in those 10 days. There are over a million images posted through social media every day of the Balloon Fiesta. And so we want everybody to have an opportunity. RV Life is giving away not only a stay at the Fiesta for the full time, but two balloon rides or balloon rides for two people. So make sure you follow rvlife.com, go find them. We'll be posting some um, things in social media about how you can register to win that. Lippert's also giving some away. So there's still some opportunities to get involved if you, if you wanna try and come. Okay, and we wanna make sure that when we see all those images on social media, they've got an RV Life sign in the background and a Lippert sign in the background. That's right. Yeah, and Pound RV Life. 
<laughs> all right, Sandy, thanks very much for joining us today. We're looking forward to the festival and all the things you've got going out there. Oh, thanks so much, Bob. Bye now. I'm Jesse from Outsiders Calling, and I love adventurous family travel with my wife, Jenny, and our son, Tucker. For over three years, we've RV'd across the U.S. and Mexico, and it's tough to find places that meet all our needs. Now, we plan our trips with the RV Trip Wizard, pull it up in the RV Life app, select it, and go. It helps us discover amazing new places to grow together as a family. RV Trip Wizard with the RV Life app is an awesome trip planning combination. You can get both for one low annual price. Check out RVLife.com to learn more. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Camp Report Show. My name is John DiPietro and we have a very special guest for this segment because we are talking to the people that are now making it happen for RVers to enjoy upscale, modern, cool facilities like they may not have been able to in the past with the uh, resorts or campgrounds, if you will, that uh, you may have gone to as a kid um, with your parents or grandparents. And we want to welcome Tristan Farrell, who is the president of Sunlight Resorts in Florida, actually in Georgia, but putting together some great resorts in the great state of Florida. And Tristan, welcome to the Camp Report Show. Thank you. Good morning. And uh, I'm certainly a privilege and honored to be here on the show. Um, fantastic uh, production you guys put together. I'm a huge fan and uh, really excited. So thank you very much for having me. Great. Well, you know what? We want to tell our viewers a little bit about your background and that you guys have 30 years of experience in, in the home building industry and real estate development and that type of thing. But now you're going, I, I really can say jumping headfirst into the RV part of development. Let me ask you this question. Why now? Absolutely. Well, you're exactly right. You know, over the last, you know, 30 to 35 years, we've built hundreds of residential communities. So uh, we're a true, you know, production and speed builder. And uh, a handful of years ago, we really wanted to break into the Florida market, sort of that retirement age group, um, 13,000 people a day turning 55 in the U.S. Uh, the baby boomers are are really exploding and everyone wants to go to Florida, certainly from the Midwest over to the East Coast. So we knew that there was just a tremendous trend of people going in that direction. Uh, we wanted to capture some of that market. And when we first jumped into it, you know, we thought, well, do we want to do retirement homes, uh, maybe some of these luxury uh, manufactured home communities? And we really kind of grew to learn about uh, how popular the RV industry was. And, and as you know, over the past year, RV sales have just absolutely skyrocketed. So uh, our first development resort at Canopy Oaks, uh, you know, certainly is a our flagship property at the moment, uh, but we're developing four others in the state of Florida and a few more I can't quite tell you about yet. Uh, but yeah, we're uh, jumping in, you know, with two feet all in and, and really want to be that luxury brand. Hmm. You know what, it's important to point out that um, when you say luxury brand, uh, you're not necessarily limiting yourselves to 45 foot uh, Prevost conversion diesel pushers or Newell coaches or that type of thing. But these have oversized sites because so many times, you know, you pull the big units onto a site and they don't fit. They can't put the slides out or they can't fit all the way back or whatever. But you got concrete pads, which are amazing because a lot less leveling to have to deal with. Large clubhouses, which is very different because a lot of the places in the Northeast or other places that have older facilities, they don't have that large clubhouse and tiki bars. So it seems like you're almost trying to create a cruise ship environment on the land. Is there any uh, anything like that in your thinking? You know, that's well said, and, and I'm glad that you brought that up. Uh, luxury brand, yes, in the sense, but we, you know, we're, we allow campers of all sizes and shapes. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we don't discriminate or uh, exclude anybody. So uh, if you have a, a camper or pop up or up to a 45 foot class A, anything in between, you're welcome to come to our parks. From the luxurious standpoint, we really wanted to bring that resort feel and experience to the RV industry. You know, most <clears throat> historical campgrounds uh, have a clubhouse and they have a pool. And uh, besides that, it's uh, just uh, really a place to park and, and kind of a quiet place. We wanted to bring some vibrancy to the 
uh, experience and put in oversized clubhouse, large oversized concrete pads, um, a tremendous amount of events and activities and really go amenity heavy like you would get at a typical uh, resort experience. So I, I haven't heard the term cruise ship, uh, but I absolutely love it. And uh, I may have to borrow that one from you. Yeah, we'll send you a, um, a, a referral <laughs> invoice. On that. Nevertheless, you know, I'm glad that you made that distinction between a luxury resort, but we welcome everyone because there are some resorts in Florida that say diesel pushers only class A only, and they don't want the class Bs or the Cs which are in fact the fastest growing segment of the RV industry. So you want um, the 30 to 40 year old crowd or the 25 to 40 year old crowd, as opposed to the retiree that is 65 and up in the place is closed for activity at 8 PM. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. We, uh, you know, we're, we're an all ages uh, type of uh, brand, you know, so, uh, I think that it comes back to something I touched on earlier, which was being very amenity heavy and event heavy. Uh, we, not only do we have reoccurring and regular weekly events, uh, but we have live music at our tiki bars every single weekend. Uh, throughout the summer, you know, we also have events scheduled, uh, even though that's not uh, the peak season. Uh, we are a year round uh, business and we welcome, you know, the families and the short term people that come throughout the summer. Uh, and of course, we want to appeal to our uh, peak season winter crowd, a, a lot of snowbirds and people who are there to stay for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So you said, um, and as we have already indicated, you are jumping head first into this with um, at least five properties that you can talk about right now. Um, you're talking about building these from the ground up. Why that as opposed to acquire an existing property and either improve or uh, build the same type of structure. Sure. Fantastic question. I think it, it, it really starts with our DNA, you know, for the last, again, 30 years, that's what we've done is we have gone and found raw land, you know, going through a rezoning process, engineered it, built it from the ground up from, uh, from zero all the way to a hundred and, and actually selling the home. So that's what we do. That's what we've always done. So us going out and finding land and getting to design it, put in our product, uh, is very important to us. There are other opportunities, you know, for um, parks that we could buy and, you know, sort of refurbish, uh, but we really don't want to take over somebody else's surgery. We really like the feel of brand new. And when yeah. people step foot on our properties, they know that they're walking into a brand new resort. Brand new, right, exactly. That's, that's very interesting because you don't have to change any mindsets that may have developed about that particular property. Um, one of the reasons that we were able to contact you is through Big Rig Media, who is a marketing company that does some work with you. When you look at your websites, these are dynamic, active websites that, that create a desire to want to be at your property. Um, even though the, even the way in which you're marketing is different than the standard in the industry right now, um, you're breaking all the rules. You know that. <laughs> Without question, uh, it's something that uh, is calculated. You know, we are absolutely bringing, you know, that um, new age, modern feel, not only to the development of the property and what consumers want for an onsite experience, but also back to our marketing strategy and, and really wanting to have a fresh, non-traditional, new age, high tech, you know, forward thinking type of approach. So. Uh, that's exactly how we have, have approached our marketing strategy in addition to the experience on site and the amenities that we're putting in. Okay. And the most important question I need to ask you, and I saw it on the uh, Canopy Oaks website is, um, and I think it's probably the attraction that will bring the peop most amount of people in is rubber duck races. <laughs> yeah, I, that's uh, that's it, man. If, if you're looking for rubber duck races, there's no better place than resort at Canopy Oaks. But you know, that's just, uh, again, comes back to appealing to all ages uh, and all types of groups uh, and all types of RVers and, and campers and commuters and camp, you know. So, you know, it's just something uh, interesting. I think that uh, it captures some of the young uh, kids attention. And so those families who are looking for a spring break trip, a summer vacation, a weekend experience, uh, what are some outside the box things that uh, that we can provide that, uh, pro you know, provide some entertainment for for a really young age group. So it's been a huge hit and uh, you and I have to get out there and race one day. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so tell us um, the the names of the other properties and, and where they are going to be located. And if you have a little bit of a timetable as when you expect them to come online. Sure. Yeah, we have four other resorts under development at the moment. Um, the first one I would, would mention would be uh, Champions Run, and that is in Ocala, Florida, uh, just north of Orlando and the Villages, not far from Gainesville. Uh, that's a 482 site development. We're putting in the identical clubhouse, uh, as you see here, at Resort at Canopy Oaks, identical swimming pool, and also another large scale full service tiki bar. Of course, your pickleball courts and, and uh, bocce ball and, and all of that type of experience. Uh, we also, that'll be open uh, around April of 2022, so not too far away. Um, Sebring Square is another development uh, that we're currently doing work at as we speak. Uh, that's scheduled to open around January of 2022. And uh, a lot of the same amenities, clubhouse, pool, pickleball courts, dog park, tiki bar, uh, which is kind of our signature thing at all of our locations. So those are the first uh, two or most soon to be open up. We actually acquired another piece of property in Sebring, Florida. Uh, that development is called Rum Runner Resort. And, uh, and again, it'll be similar to the other ones as far as amenities go, tiki bar, uh, and that type of experience. And the last one I can talk about is a, a property called Palm Breeze, and that is in Punta Gorda, Florida, just north of Fort Myers. Uh, that Southwest Florida market is just extremely hot and really the most popular growing amongst the uh, 55 plus demographic. So uh, that's going to be a massive development and all the same, you know, luxurious high end oversized uh, amenities and clubhouse and tiki bar that I mentioned before. Well, I'm sure that our viewers are interested in your properties. Uh, as you give me those locations, um, the cost of real estate, the acquiring the property is just going crazy now around the villages and certainly on the uh, on the West Coast now, it's, in, it's getting insane. It certainly is, you know, uh, on one side of the fence, that's a, a good thing for us when we're, you know, in the housing market and, and selling houses, uh, it's, a, it's a benefit. Uh, certainly it, it is an, an expense for us uh, on the development side of things, but, you know, uh, we'll take it with a grain of salt. And uh, I'd certainly uh, prefer that the, the real estate market be where it is today than where it was about a decade ago. Exactly. So, uh, so I'll take it, let's say that. Exactly. Well, we want to thank you so much. We've been talking with Tristan Farrell, who's the president of Sunlight Resorts. They're building some beautiful properties in Florida and uh, at other areas to be discussed and disclosed at a later time. Tristan, we want to thank you so much for taking time from your busy day to be with us here on the Camp Report Show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And for all the viewers and listeners out there, please visit sunlight-resorts.com to check out all of our locations for updates, news, and to make reservations. So thank you again. It's been an honor and uh, really appreciate it.